Welcome to Slash Forward. In this episode, we're reluctantly returning to perfection yet again with Tremors 3 Back to Perfection. Oh, I just got that. If you like films that constantly change their main draw in ways that are ultimately meaningless, subscribe to the channel for more. Let's get to it. We open in Argentina, of course, where Bert has called a midnight press conference to demonstrate that Shriekers are no longer a threat if you just wait for them to group up so you can mow them down with a large gun. And then he returns triumphantly to perfection, where he's still building up his defenses while the town focuses on tourism opportunities, not having been victim of an attack for 11 years. This strategy includes off-roading events that offer simulated graboid attacks to thrill seekers. Despite Jack's success, he's derided for his lack of a clear business plan by Jody, who's come to perfection to run her Uncle Walter's store and get a piece of that juicy graboid action. The next day, we see Mindy is back from the first one, fresh off her vacation to Isla Nublar, and she's returning as a moody teen. Yay! Now we got that going for us, too. She accompanies Beauchamps out behind the mound, looking for some kicks in this boring town, and finds it comes in the form of a surprise graboid attack. Maggie then takes charge of the group as an expert, even though she didn't really do anything the first time, and they head back into town as Bert notices the readings and hits the alarm. He's triangulated signals across the valley, and determined there to be three graboids moving down from the north. They're not cut off this time, but still decide to act quickly and alone, since they know they have limited time before the graboids become shriekers. They end up having no choice but to accept help when they're approached by federal agents as they make their preparations in the morning. They're here to trap and transport this endangered species. No killing allowed, and if the graboids pose a threat, they'll just seal off the town. Yeah, that's not why I called you. Well then, maybe you should have thought that through, Nancy. See, Bert runs off to shoot away his troubles when his ground alarm goes off. He goes to check it out, and a graboid is gently aroused from the earth to taunt him and he wishes it across his property line, but he's just showing off for now. They form a tentative alliance with the feds, agreeing to use their sedatives to help them capture one of the graboids so they can move along. The paleontologist returns from the field with a 300-year-old egg with fresh embryonic gunk inside, indicating the graboids can hatch spontaneously from long dormant eggs. Out in the field, Bert gets jammed up and goes for an underground barrel ride. Before Jack has time to mourn, he gets a radio call from Bert inside the beast and follows his request to lead the the graboid to his property. It slams itself into his barrier, giving Jack time to cut him out, and he learns that he's got a squirter on his hands, as he works to free Bert from his slimy prison. The next day, we learn the graboids have made their conversion, and the Shriekers have handled the federal agent situation. So, the townsfolk work to cover their heat signatures best they can. As they try to pin the Shriekers into a box canyon, they're also stranded by a large, sterile graboid that's unable to metamorphosize into its next form. They spend the night there and wake up to Miguel, putting the finishing touches on his rock and he offers it to Bert's capable hands for walkie acquisition. He calls into Mindy's request line and has her jam on some tunage to allow them to get off the rock. In the canyon, they discover the Shriekers have molted, and they wander off to find a way out of the valley. The newest iteration shows off its awkward form before farting itself into the atmosphere and aggressively gliding at them, and Miguel doesn't make it. Then a second one glides in on the ladies, even though they hid inside a cardboard box, forcing them to take even more cover. Mindy thinks quick and nukes a honey ham for about three seconds but still creates enough of a heat signature to distract the glider and let them get into the cooler. I never thought you were dumb. Oh, well, thanks, but the way you brought that up out of nowhere makes me feel a little self-conscious. Out in the field, they learn their insides are highly reactive, which is what allows them to ass-blast their way toward the heavens. They don't get a chance to use this information, however, before being forced into Bert's panic room. This should cover their heat signatures, but the ass-blaster starts burning its way in anyway. Bert sets a trap and then gleefully escapes down the emergency slide, a fun way to spend your last moments fleeing before everything you worked for goes up in flames. Then they take a quick boat ride to the junkyard and let Jack pretend like he's steering. Good job, Jack. There, after a group conference and a porta potty, they decide to scavenge parts to build a potato gun so they can perforate that ass and blow their attackers up. They reconvene after nightfall and put the parts to good use, killing two, but finding the final one too smart when it ducks. This requires them to engage in close combat. Right when they think they're done, the albino graboid shows back up, attracted to Bert's stupid watch. So while Jody tries to detach Bert from the mattress, Jack makes a sticky ball that attaches the watch to the ass blaster, causing it to be consumed by the graboid, which then just sort of goes away. As the town reconstructs, we see the tourism is back on track, and Jack and Mindy are dating now. Bert manages his real estate concerns by keeping the sterile loner as a pet, preventing anyone from wanting to live in the valley, and absolutely wrecking Melvin's financial situation. 
Just a reminder that I've set up a website that allows you to support the channel through donations. Any donation unlocks a link to a 10 minute review of Toby Hooper's Life Force and would be greatly appreciated. Tremors 3 is really pushing the line for me. I feel we've strayed too far and I'm hoping for big things with the fourth film, which is a prequel that may take us back to basics, if we're lucky. If you enjoyed the video, I'd love for you to become a part of the channel by subscribing. Thanks for watching.